today we're going to be looking at cables under distributed loads. Here we've got a cable supported at A and B, and it's subjected to a distributed load W, which varies along the span of the cable as a function of X. Can you guess what tools we're going to use to work with these problems? It's our equilibrium equations. So we're going to use our equilibrium equations and simplify them, play with them, until we get a nice equation for y. y is an equation for the geometry of our cable as a function of x. And here's a tip for today. Don't stress about trying to memorize everything. Just see if you can follow the concepts and the logic behind the steps to getting our equation. Before we dig into our equilibrium, let's remember what we learned about cables under concentrated loads. Under a concentrated load, we had a constant horizontal tension component, but the overall tension in each cable segment would change depending on what the slope of that segment was. And the steeper the slope was, the larger the overall tension was. So under a distributed load, our cable forms a curve, which means that it has a constantly changing slope. So our overall tension will also be changing while our horizontal component remains constant. When we look at the equilibrium of a cable with a constantly changing slope, we have to zoom way in and consider the equilibrium of just a tiny little segment of that cable. This segment spans a little distance of delta x. And the total load that's acting on that segment is equal to the value of our loading function at that point, wx, times the distance of that section span, delta x. That load is located at a point k times delta x from the origin of our segment. k is a number between 0 and 1 which means that this is a fractional distance. So if k were equal to one, that means that the total load on this segment is acting at a full distance of delta x from our origin. But if k were equal to like 0 0.5, then our total load would be acting at a distance half of delta x from our origin. We're going to go through our three equilibrium equations using the free body diagram of this cable segment. So starting in the x direction. In the x direction, we have the x component of the tension at this end and the x component of the tension at that end. Now for funsies, I want you to divide everything by our segment length, delta x. And remember, we're looking at delta x as a very tiny segment, right? We kind of want to look at it as if it were a point, actually. So as delta x becomes a point, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's approaching zero. So as delta x approaches zero, the change delta t and delta theta would also approach theta, or approach zero, sorry, right? So knowing that, we could simplify this statement to be, and with a little calculus, what this says is that the change in the horizontal tension along our cable is equal to zero. So we would expect that, right? Because our horizontal tension is constant along a cable. In the y direction, we also have equilibrium. So the sum of f in the y direction is zero. Our forces in the y direction are the y components of the tension at this end and at this end. And our 
our net applied force in the y direction. Just like before, we'll divide everything by our segment length, delta x. And as we consider delta x getting smaller and smaller as it approaches a point, our delta t and our delta theta will also approach zero, which lets us rewrite this statement as which says that the change in the vertical component of our tension in our cable is equal to our applied force at our point x. For our last equilibrium equation, we're going to take the moments about our origin, point O. Since the tension at this end is acting at the origin, we won't have to consider it. We'll only have the x and y component of this tension and our applied force. So the x component of the tension at this end is equal to t times cos theta, and it acts at a perpendicular distance from our origin of delta y. And if we were to pull in that direction, we would create a moment in the negative direction. In the y direction, we have the vertical component of this tension, which is t sine theta, and it acts at a perpendicular distance from our origin of delta x. And pulling in that direction would create a positive moment. That leaves us with our applied force. And remember, it's acting at a perpendicular distance of k times delta x. And just like last time, we're going to divide everything by delta x. And look at our segment as delta x approaches zero. So since we still have a delta x term here, this whole term is going to go to zero. Then we're going to add t cos theta delta x over delta y to both sides of our equation so that we get Then I want you to remember that sine over cos is equal to tan. So we can simplify this statement by dividing both sides of our expression by t cos theta. And these t's will cancel, which means that we get... And isn't that beautiful? Okay, I think you guys have been following with me so far, right? So we're gonna step back and look at all three of the equilibrium equations that we've simplified. Then we're gonna play around with them a bit and get something useful. These are the simplified expressions from doing equilibrium in our x direction and in our y direction. We are going to integrate both of them. Remember that when you integrate a zero, you get a constant, which means we get th stands for our constant horizontal tension. And in the y direction, I'm going to leave this in integral form because we don't actually know what our loading function is at this point. Now I want you to take our y equation and divide it by our x equation. And remember that sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta. Now, do you remember seeing this tan theta somewhere else? Like in our equilibrium about our moment? From simplifying our moment equilibrium equation, we got that dy over dx is equal to tan theta. 
And from working with our x and y equilibrium, we got that tan theta is also equal to 1 over th times the integral of our loading function. What we're after is an equation for y, which is the geometry of our cable under distributed load. So to get y, we would want to integrate. Your favorite thing to do. So integrating this means that we are integrating this. And since th is a constant, we can pull it in front of our integral sign. So we get that the equation for the geometry of our cable under distributed load is equal to the double integral of our loading function times 1 over our constant horizontal tension. That's crazy, right? Okay, and this can be used even to do more. When you guys come back next time, we're going to use this equation to find the maximum tension in our cable. But before that, I think you guys have earned a break. See you next time.